Welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. If you just start in data science, there seems to be a lot of tools that you need to master, but not all of them are essential, and what essential skills are could be very different across different job roles. In today's video, I'll talk about the essential tools that I've learned on the job in the past six years and used on a day-to-day -day basis as a data scientist and data science consultant. We'll be going over a few different categories of tools, programming languages and IDEs, BI software, version control software, APIs, and web frameworks. I'll present them in roughly in the order of what I think I learned first as a beginner. So without further ado, let's get started. When it comes to programming languages, Python, R, and SQL are the most important programming languages for most data analysts and data scientists. This is based on the job listing of around 2,000 data analysts and 2,000 data scientists job posts that I analyzed last year in 2021. SQL or Structured Querying Language is an important important data querying tool in most companies across industries. It's used to aggregate, combine data, and engineer data features that can be used for data analysis and modeling. Learning SQL, I think, gives you a very good idea of many basic operations on structured data. Knowing SQL also means that you can pick up SOS very quickly because you can use SQL syntax in SOS as well. Similarly, if you want to learn Spark SQL later if you want to work with big data. So SQL is what I'd recommend beginners to start with. Next to SQL, Python is the most popular programming language used by data scientists and data analysts for data analysis, data visualization, and modeling. It's a very versatile language and relatively easy to pick up. Both Python and R are open source programming languages. In my project, I use Python and R quite interchangeably, as R is also a very good option for data analysis, especially if you do a lot of statistical analysis and modeling. Since so many statisticians use use and contribute to R packages, there's a lot of powerful packages for statistical modeling developed in R. There's often a big debate when it comes to which one to learn first, R or Python. From my experience, I start with R and gradually find myself using Python more often in projects. This is because Python can be used for different purposes such as web app development and automation. It also has a powerful machine learning library such as scikit-learn and it is very easy to use. It's also a bit easier to write object-oriented code in Python and the syntax is generally easier to read because it uses indentation rather than brackets for defining a code block. That that said, I think it's not super important which one you choose to learn first because the coding principles stay the same, so the skill you learn from a programming language can be easily transferred to the other. And both R and Python have their own merits, and they both can do the same things, just in slightly different ways. The most important libraries I think anyone working with Python should know are NumPy for working with arrays, Pandas for working with data frames and doing data transformation, Matplotlib or Seaborn or Bokeh for data visualization, scikit-learn for machine learning, and requests for using APIs. Scikit-learn is more for general machine learning, but if you work more heavily with image data, then you might also want to use OpenCV, which is a library specializing in performing computer vision tasks. If you work with text data, then NLTK and Spacey are the two popular NLP libraries for starters. For deep learning tasks, then you definitely want to use Keras or TensorFlow. Keras Keras is actually an API built on top of TensorFlow. It abstracts some of the TensorFlow's functionalities for training deep neural networks, so it's generally easier to use and more user-friendly. When coding in R, my most favorite libraries are data.table for data wrangling and ggplot2 for data visualization. Data.table is a fantastic library. It provides a great alternative to the base R syntax when it comes to data wrangling and it's much faster and more readable. And ggplot2 can produce really great visualizations for your exploratory data analysis, so I'd highly recommend these two libraries. Regarding IDEs or integrated development environments, if you work with R, I think the best choice is still R Studio. It has everything you need for writing code such as a code editor, a debugger, and tools for creating projects and developing R packages. When I work with Python for data analysis or visualization and machine learning, I think JupyterLab is still my favorite choice. 
size. You can think of it as a more advanced version of Jupyter Notebook. I like the interactivity and flexibility that it provides, such as the integrated command line options for creating markdown documents, drag and drop to rearrange cells, etc. This is on top of all the other functionalities that Jupyter Notebook offers. For my projects and studies, I usually try to create some really nice readable markdown for people to read and follow. And if I want to share it with non-technical colleagues, I would export the notebook as PDF and send it around. This is similar to creating our markdown document in our studio, only a little bit more convenient. Visual Studio Code is also a very good option for writing code in Python, and you can also use Jupyter Notebook there. I find Visual Studio Code more convenient for web development projects because of the live server tool and a lot of other extensions available to make your life easier as a developer. In a larger or more data mature team or organization, you might not need to use your local development environment at all, but your company might use an enterprise solution platform. Examples of those platforms include DataIQ, which is an end-to-end -end data science solution that integrates different tools and helps automate the data science pipeline, including data collection, model development, model deployment, and monitoring. Some companies that I used to work with also use similar platforms such as Azure Databricks. These platforms aim to create a unified place for data scientists, data engineers, and data analysts to work together. If you already know the basic tools, then these platforms should be quite easy to learn to use. But I think companies often offer training for employees on this as well. As for BI software, I believe that excelling Excel, a bit weird to say, would pay a huge dividend in long term. It's like an universal tool that the majority of companies and organizations, however big or small, still use. For my work, I also use Excel sometimes for some quick and dirty data tasks, such as making a small data report or some quick analysis. However, it's not an efficient tool. If you need to perform the same task again and again, that makes you more prone to making mistakes, but there's a solution for that. As a data scientist or data analyst, you have the coding skills skill advantage to utilize more advanced functionalities such as using macros in VBA to automate Excel tasks. Additionally, Power Pivot and Power Query are also nice additions to your Excel toolbox, especially when you are managing and analyzing large datasets. You can create a whole data model that allows datasets to connect and communicate with each other. And the Pivot Table functionalities also allow you to make dice and slice operations on the data, doing aggregation and creating interactive reports and visualizations. However, when it comes to specialized software for data visualization and dashboarding, Tableau and Power BI are still the most powerful options that most companies use across industries. I've worked with both and I think Tableau has more extensive capabilities and also better performance. Tableau is also a bit more popular and older in the market than Power BI, but of course you depend on the company that you work for, which software you will use. When collaborating with other people in a data science project that involves a large code base, it's inevitable that you need to use some sort of version control for your work. The most popular tool is Git, which is free and open source software for distributed version control, that is tracking the changes in any set of files. Git is different from GitHub in the sense that Git is a software and GitHub is more of a hosting platform, and it's just one of the popular hosting platforms among many others. Honestly, I didn't know Git before I started working in my current job because I always worked by myself as a student or even as a data analyst for a small startup earlier. But now thinking back, I realize that it's actually useful to use Git even when you're working alone because you can keep track of all your changes and go back to any earlier version of your code very easily. It also prevents you from making dozen versions versions of your project and ending up losing track of what's going on. If you're using Git, it's also impossible to lose any valuable code or delete any files by mistake. All right, that's a lot of tools to master. But remember, you don't need to learn everything at once. You may not even need to use some of them in your project. And for some other projects, you might need to use a completely different set of tools. As a data science consultant, my projects are quite varied. And sometimes I get to do some quite interesting web development projects, such as building a web-based data visualization tool or developing a data science prototype. For web frameworks in Python, I like using Streamlit, which allows you to easily 
easily turn data scripts into a shareable web app, it can take only a few minutes. And recently, I discovered Banner, which is also a very nice and easy tool to build data dashboard in Python. It's definitely a newer library than Streamlit, and it's not as mature when it comes to different kinds of widgets that you can use, but it's also quite fun to use. I also made a couple of videos on my channel about it, so feel free to check them out on my channel. These Python libraries provide a simple framework for web development, and so you don't need to worry about the front end of your app. The standard widgets that those libraries provide already look quite decent, but the possibilities for customizing those front end elements are quite limited. If you come from the web development world or have some experience with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can explore some JavaScript visualization libraries such as d3.js to create highly customized web-based data visualization. And if you want to develop a full dynamic web app, a powerful route that you might want to go down is to use a professional web framework such as Vue.js or React.js, which are both open source JavaScript libraries that are used to build user interfaces. They're usually more complex and involve some learning curve, but the possibilities are endless. Also, if you want to have some computational underneath your app or use some machine learning models, you can use available Python APIs for your model or create the APIs yourself with Fast API. Generally, I would recommend learning these tools only later in your data science career after you've mastered all the basic tools. For all these tools, I often learn them on a need-based basis. If a project requires a certain skill, I try to learn them really fast using all the free online resources and books I could find. For me, it's probably the most efficient way to learn these skills while having fun at the same time. I hope this video gives you a clear overview of the essential tools for data science. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.